What's up, you guys? So, I think my last video, 2024 summer updated makeup, someone had made a comment about how you couldn't really see anything. <laughs> it's so valid. So I got a new light, and if you watch my videos, let me know if it looks different, if it looks better, because if I'm wasting my money, let me know, you know? I wanted to talk about something that's been on my mind yet again, because a girl loves the app. I just turned 29, right? And I reached a point in my life where I feel like I'm really, really, finding myself, coming out of my shell, realizing my personality, who I am when I'm out in public and knowing how to talk to people and all this and that, right? And it got me thinking, I've always been such a big advocate of like protecting your peace, putting yourself first and da da da, like having alone time. I'm like a huge alone time person. If I don't have enough alone time, I'm gonna be a bitch and I can admit that. So I take the responsibility to not put myself in situations when I know I'm not gonna be a good vibe. I've always grown up talking about how I'm kind of a lone wolf. Had friends, but kind of felt alone and felt, I don't know. I do feel kind of lonely, but at the same time, I'm okay with that. Or I've told myself that I'm okay with that. I feel like growing up, we're always got kind of told to pick between like, are you an extrovert or are you an introvert? All my life, I grew up thinking like, oh, I'm just shy. Like I'm just an introverted, shy person. And I think like some people just naturally can be a little more quiet and to themselves. And some people are more like dad and loud. There's no wrong answer. There's no good or bad. It's just, you are what you are at the end of the day. And let me just preface this like, I'm autistic. So that has a lot to play with it. That's, that's a different topic, you know? But anyways, I would identify as just like introverted and shy and I don't have a big circle, which is still kind of true. But there was a part in that statement where it was me more so hiding, hiding myself from a certain group of friends, hiding who I really am and hiding myself to not let people truly see me. And it was also because like, I didn't know how to interact with them. I didn't know how to fit in certain people. And still today, this comes up sometimes, would just send me into my shell where it's like, I don't know what to say. I don't know how to act. I don't know how to be myself. I don't know how to open up. And, and sometimes like you just don't vibe with certain people and that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But this was with like almost everybody. And you hear this a lot, right? You think I'm shy until you really get to know me. You see me around my group of friends or you see me with my boyfriend and I'm like so loud and so crazy and so weird, right? I didn't know how to let that side of me where it's like the more real side of me where I know who I am when I'm on camera. On camera, I'm comfortable. I've been doing this shit for a long time. That's when I truly come out of my shell. One day I started realizing that like when I'm around certain people, I can be who I am when I'm on camera. Certain people I noticed would send me into my shell because in a very honest, aspect of it. I didn't feel like cool enough. Like I didn't know how to fit in. I didn't know how to talk to them. I didn't know how to come off as the cool person that they will accept me as. But you're going to resonate with this if these are th some things that you do. After hanging out with them, I would go home and I would analyze everything I said, how I said it, what I did, what I didn't say, everything that I presented as, how they might have perceived me, what they thought of me, it would play and play and play for the rest of the day. Basically what I was doing is I was judging myself for them so I could be ahead of them. It was almost as if I didn't feel worthy enough for these people to think I belong here. And then one day is when I learned the whole protect your peace, be selfish. Like you saw that shit all over social media, be an independent independent queen that doesn't need anybody by her side. And you know, that whole narrative, we heard it. We were like getting fucking drilled with that. But what social media also didn't tell you about that is that there's a point when you can take it too far. No one really talked about that part. When do you stop protecting your peace? You never really stop protecting your peace, but do you really think you're gonna get anywhere in life if your goal is always and always, always just be at peace and never have any conflict and never have any challenges come in front of you? How the hell are you ever supposed to progress and learn things about yourself when you're being challenged, when your self-respect is being challenged? All of that, how the hell are you supposed to get anywhere if all you do is go to the gym and hang out with nobody, go to work and go home and that's all you do because you're so worried about just protecting your peace. Protecting your peace isn't going to be the same for everybody. Some people protect their peace in a healthy way, but there's a lot of people that protect their peace in an unhealthy way and that is who I'm talking to today because I've been there. I just talked to friends of mine who are still there. It's really common because at the end of the day, guys, we're all traumatized in one way or another. Look, I am a fucking advocate when it comes to going into periods of isolation, periods of reflection. I think you need to go through that multiple times in your life because you're constantly progressing in your life, right? You're never going to be the same person. You're not meant to. It's a really crucial pause in our lives, our social lives, where we try to find who we are without your friends, who you are without work defining you, without your social life defining you. These are the moments where you become nobody so that you can become somebody. If you've been there, you know this, right? You push all your friends away, your family away. People aren't really important in your life anymore. The only thing that's important to you is your growth, peace, your state of mind, and what you wanna do. 
anybody that tries to infiltrate our peace, especially the people that we start to judge and think like, oh, they're toxic or they make me feel like this. Like they're not good energy or they're not high vibrational. They're only there to disrupt our progress. And when, I, when I'm saying these things, like we gotta use some discernment. Like yes, there are some people that really are there just trying to use you, right? There are people that genuinely aren't good for you. That's obvious, but not everybody is that. You need these disruptors and these people that maybe challenge you or maybe you see some flaws in or that may trigger you a little bit for you to become the somebody that you're looking for. Life isn't gonna be fucking blase all the time. No one's gonna trigger you and this and this and that. But it's about knowing how to have boundaries. Sometimes for too long, we start to tell ourselves, I'm all that I need. I don't need anybody. No one gets me the way that I do. No one thinks the way that I do. I'm girl bossing and I'm getting where I wanna be and I don't need anybody by my side. I think it's good. When you're so focused on your career, you're so focused on being the best version of yourself that nobody can take you off your track. When we're out here declaring to ourselves, that we're at peace and we're independent. In reality, even though there's a part of that statement that may be true, there's a small part of you in there that's also screaming, I'm lonely and I'm scared. So at what point do we start to draw the line and realize that we're only isolating ourselves because we don't trust anybody to accept us for who we really are because we don't even accept ourselves. That we're afraid to let people in because they're gonna eventually see what we see in ourselves. One thing you start to realize as you get older, especially when you've had a lot of romantic partners without having friends. I've been that girl where my boyfriend was all that I wanted to have. I didn't give a shit about friends. But you start to realize how important companionship is. Is, and I'm talking like platonic, you need a circle around you, even if it's small, to understand you and to hold you when you can't be so strong. Because no matter how much we know we're strong ass bitches, I'm a strong ass bitch, but that does not mean that I'm always gonna be strong. That doesn't mean that I'm always the smartest person in the room and that doesn't mean that I don't need anybody's help. Because at the end of the day, everyone needs fucking help. I'm not saying that learning to be independent and stand on your own two feet isn't important. You become a really strong person when you learn to not depend on anybody and anything to make you feel fulfilled and like you're worthy of something. But that was never meant to be you doing that, to learn how to take on the world on your own. Trust me, I know it's scary. When you've been hurt by people, when you've been abandoned before, whatever it is, especially if you grew up having to learn how to manage your own emotions, not rely on anybody, not even your parents, I get it. And you know why it's so scary? Those people that you let in, if they were to see some sort of flaw in you and make a judgment on you, that shit cuts deep because they really see you for who you really are and now their criticism is a little bit too real. The people that see you are meant to hold you to a certain standard and are meant to align you when you're out of line. And I'm not saying let everybody in. I let people in around me now, but I still have boundaries, some more than others. I have like maybe one or two friends that I genuinely talk about my private life things with. I am a slow burn when it comes to trusting people. When you're really trying to get to know me, there's nothing wrong with that. What's different now than who I was in the past? Has, is that I'm actually trying and I'm actually learning how to trust the right people. So sometimes that looks like saying yes to things that I might be scared to go to, but it's taking that risk of letting myself be perceived, letting myself be judged. But to circle back to what I was saying earlier, you have to learn to accept yourself and your flaws first. Be okay with embracing the fact that you are never gonna be perfect enough to never be judged by people. Off topic, these ColourPop lip oils are even when your people or people in general see a flaw in you, it's not the end of the world. That's how you learn. It's okay to make mistakes. People are way too worried about themselves to be that worried about you. And even if someone does judge you, believe me when I say that those same people have their own skeletons in their closet. And when that lesson presents itself in front of you, when that challenge and when that ego kill or whatever is right in front of you, you are exactly where you needed to be in that moment to learn a valuable lesson to become a better version of yourself. So all this for me to say, let the world see you, because to be perfect is to be phony, and nobody wants to be phony, right? You better be right. I'm here speaking to whoever I'm speaking to and to myself. I understand you. You're not alone. If you need anything, I am here to talk.